In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to make a card using the beautiful new pear tree frame um, from the John Next Door Christmas 2021 collection. Um, I keep saying I love this, but I do love this. You've got the most beautiful partridge in a pear tree type die. So this is a pear tree of delicate leaves with pears hanging on it. The frame is made of entwined leaves with, again, pears all in there. And you even get a little insert die for it and a partridge and two separate pears to add on. And what I tend to do is whenever I've cut a few pears, I'll cut quite a lot. I'll pop them in a little bag and stick them with the die just so that the next time I come to make one, I've got some already cut and I'm not wasting anything. So we're going to make a card like this, which you'll have seen at the beginning. Um, and I love this. It's so soft and subtle in this vintage gold and this spring green satin card. Just works really, really well. And it's quite a simple card to make. So we'll get started with this one. And what I've done is I've already cut to size the pieces that I need. So I'm going to start by cutting the pear tree because this is the most complicated one. And it's always worth cutting it if you can in the middle of a piece of card, almost cut to size. And again, this is designed to fit through your standard A5 die cutting machines, but it's a detailed die and I'm cutting a satin card. So I'm going to use my metal shim just to increase the pressure. And just to make sure that I get all of the pieces out that I want. So I'm just going to run it through a couple of times just to make sure that I've got a good cut. And always check with a die, certainly an intricate die. Have a look on the back. Make sure it's all cut through, that you can see that the lines have cut through. Now, I want to actually show you on this one how we cut down or how we take it out because... If you look, it is quite a complex die with a lot of pieces. So I find the best way to do this is to pull it from the sides. So take it from the top. Really, I should take the tape off. And you want to leave the die cut piece almost in the die. So I'm just pushing on each of these and pulling out the waste. That way, I don't tear any of it out. When you start pulling the die straight off, you will find with something that's intricate that you end up tearing it. And that's not what you want to do. So just spend that little bit of time and release, first of all, the spare. And again, you could use that for another card, drop a different colour in. And then you can just release the die from, or the die cut piece from the die and just clean out any last minute bits. So it's worth just spending a minute or so just to make sure that you get this delicate die out perfectly. And you can see there how that's come out absolutely beautifully. Got a little bit of excess hanging off there. Let's take that off. But it is connected where it needs to be, but it still is. But you can see you've got these beautiful pears hanging down. So that's us cutting our pear tree. What we then need to do is we then need to cut the frame. So here I've got a piece of the spring green in the satin and a piece of the vintage gold again in the satin. And we're going to use the frame. And when you're using a large frame, what I've done is I've cut this piece. So I've cut the piece here to, we'll just give this a measure in my guillotine. There we go to five and three quarters, which is just the right size to do it. And then we want to place the middle in as we want, um, sorry, on this one, we don't want to put the middle in because we want it to be solid. So we're just using the frame. So we just tape that down, get it nice and even. Okay, and then we cut that. Now again, this is a detailed frame. So when it comes to cutting it, it will want cutting in both directions, certainly if you're using an A5 machine. So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to use the shim and I'm going to put my top plate on. And I want to show you what I mean by in both directions. So we're going to run it through. We go over that sleeping policeman. We want to take it off, rotate the die 90 degrees, put it in and pull it back. That way we make sure 
that the straight edges on each of the dies have an even cut. So I'll show you what I mean. So what we've got is it's cut down there and we've rotated it so it cuts down there so that when we check it on the back, it's all cut. And again, this time we just release the die cut piece from the die because it's all connected in and just find any pieces. And you don't need to emboss this die, certainly not if you shim it. It's so fine that even cutting sort of mirror card, you'll see that it's got that beautiful beveled edge and it looks like it's filigree metal, certainly if you cut it in gold. So there we go, let's just take the last little pieces of this out. I do love the way that it looks on this one. Some of these lines are so fine, but they're all connected. So there's nothing hanging or hanging loose. So I've now got to the same size, a piece of the vintage gold to go behind, but I don't want that to be flat. I want to give a little bit of dimension. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of foam tape and put that through the center square. So the outside square or the outside frame is actually floating on top of the card. So around each piece of the square, all four sides, and just to help support it, just add a little bit in the middle so that it doesn't dip in the center. And we simply take off our foam tape protection just like this, hover over the top and pop it over. And you can see there how you get that 3D look and the shadowing onto the back plate. So absolutely beautiful. And what we need to do next is to take a piece of the vintage card. So here I've got a piece of the vintage gold in the satin again, and we're going to use the die from the center and just cut that out so that we've got an, a raised panel on it. Now, this is one of the things that you'll find when you're using a large area like this of a die that's very flat and a speciality card. If your plates are a little bit marked, you can leave a mark on the plate. So one of the things I like to do is to actually emboss it. So you can see here, I've got a couple of little marks on there where I've cut it. Hopefully you can see there. So what we do is pop that into an embossing folder, which I've already done, and emboss it, which will pass out any of those pieces and just adds that little bit of extra interest in the middle. And again, to keep that nice dimension going, we're just going to add a little bit of foam tape around this to raise it up. So again, go around all four. I've put that little scrap I've got left into the center, just to make sure it's supported in the center. And we'll pop another piece off there. Okay. And again, remove the foam tape and we'll place that in the middle. You can use any normal embossing folder for this. The um, Craft Artist Satin Card embosses beautifully. And it's a great way to, to put a large area of color in, but still keep that little bit of patination going. It just adds that really nice sort of expensive look to it. So we're going to add our tree. And again, the tree is extremely delicate. I would really strongly recommend that for the tree, you actually use a spray glue. So I'm using a spray glue. I use Craft Mount by 3M. And I want to ground the tree against the base and pop that into the center. And this is so much easier when you're going with a satin card or mirror card, using a dry glue like a spray glue means that there's no marks at all because the last thing you want are any glue marks or reflections on this. So what we then need to do is I'm going to take a little bit of vintage gold in the Craft Artist card again. And this time it's the mirror version. And I'm going to take my two little pairs. My fingers are a little bit sticky. And my partridge. And I'm just going to tape that down and then I'm going to add a second piece of tape over the top. And this is so that they will stay in position, making it easier to cut multiples. 
So I can take that, I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. And you can see there, I've got my two little pairs. And pop through one of the holes. I've got my little partridge and he has very hard for you to see, but he's actually got embossed lines on to make him look right. And because we double taped this, you can just lift that off, place that down and cut it again quite easily and just repeat cut that until you've got enough. Now, I've got quite a few here, so I'm already covered. So I'm going to take my partridge and I'm just going to take a little bit of foam tape and I'm cutting it down. You might want to use one of the little squares or a 3D glue dot, but just to get a little bit on there, just so that again, he's a little bit raised against the base. And we'll pop, should we have him this time? We'll have him actually in the tree this time. So there we go. Here, I've got my pears and I've got the little baggie that's got the spares in because I've cut quite a few. Let's take those ones out. And I'm just going to use a little bit of glue glaze and pop that on a few of these pairs. So we'll start with those three using one of the Crafts 2 Jewel Pickup tools just to pop those into place. And the reason I'm using the Craft Artist Stamp Glue Glaze is it's a sort of solvent-based dry glue so it grabs very quickly, but it doesn't squish like PVAs do. So you won't see any marks on the front. So I think we'll have another one there and another one there. And I think that might do it, actually. I don't want to go too crazy with them. You don't have to add any of the pairs if you don't want to. It just sort of really works. You can see there, I've got those. Any spares? Pop them back in your bag, ready for your next project. You can almost sit with one of the tiny little machines like the Spellbinder Sapphire and cut yourself a lot of those. It's a perfect way to use all your scraps of your mirror and your satin cards. And then we've got that. So all I need to do then is to finish this off. So I've got a mat here of the gold card. And for speed, I'm gonna use a little bit of spray glue. Again, I like to use a dry glue when I'm using a mirror card or a satin card. And then I've got a white card blank here, and this has been cut to seven inches square. And all I've actually done is to just put on this another piece of the satin card. You could actually cut from the middle of this so you're not wasting, which is probably what I'd do, your tree. But again, I'm gonna add a little bit of foam tape onto this for dimension. And it's, and it's finished. But with the frame, you can cut it into cards. So you can make a beautiful card where you actually cut it into the card blank itself. Um, there's so many different options you can do when you've got a separate inside cutting line. The tree, you can make a little forest of them. You can put them together to make a pattern. There's so many different options. Again, a little bit in the centre to provide some support. And we'll just take that foam tape off. Just like this. Check our card blank, make sure it's top folds right. And pop that right in the centre. And there we've got our beautiful partridge in a pear tree. Very classy card. And by mixing together that mirror and that satin, the satin gives a really expensive look. You've got an expensive looking card made relatively easily and quickly.